this top that Zendaya wore, and she probably wore it to some sophisticated event like a gala or a luncheon, and I'm gonna wear my shirt to a bar. <laughs> and that's because I wanna make this top out of fabric to support my favorite college basketball team, which is Xavier. I'm gonna use Simplicity Pattern 8545 as my starting point to make the top. And here's a few things I noticed about this top that I think are gonna be a challenge. First being the neckline. This is definitely not, not how I wanted this to look. The neck binding in Zendaya's top is quite a bit thicker than the neck binding in the pattern. Second, how straight the seam is from the organza to the matte white fabric across her chest, like from the sleeve through the bodice to the other sleeve. Yeah, it's definitely not matching up. <laughs> it's definitely not matching up. And third, how the hemline of the sleeve with the bodice is the same length. I think this is gonna be the easiest out of all three. Yeah, that's cropped. That is a cropped, a very cropped shirt. To make these alterations to the simplicity pattern, I retraced all pattern pieces and simply guessed at what length to make the top sheer organza pattern on the bodice and the sleeves so that they would line up perfectly because everything is perfect like Zendaya. <laughs> I also took a wag or a wild ass guess as to how thick to make the neck binding. So here I am cutting up this what feels like super silky smooth um, organza fabric to make this top that Zendaya wore somewhere. <laughs> I'm planning on wearing mine to a bar, maybe even work. But like it's a little short, it's a little cropped for me to wear to work. Um, some more to come on that later. And yes, this fabric is blue and like blue, the water is also blue. And this fabric is like trying to cut into water because it is so silky, so silky smooth. <laughs> it just like rubs everywhere. Because of this reason, I have all my pattern pieces pinned to the bejesus out of them um, so they don't slip and slide over the fabric. Also, as you probably guessed, I'm not making this in white, I'm making it in blue. But I'm not only making it in blue, you're gonna have to see what the print is for the bottom piece. And let me tell you, it's sports themed. What can I say? I'm just a tomboy at heart who likes to wear, who likes to wear sports clothes. But I think that's what I'm trying to accomplish with this. I want it to be like sports themed without making it be too tomboyish, like sophisticated tomboy, I guess. Yes, sophisticated tomboy. We're going with sophisticated tomboy. Thank goodness I pinned the bejesus out of this because cutting this is actually going fairly well. Honestly, cutting out corners on patterns to me is the hardest part. Also, if we look very closely at this photo, the sleeve length is the exact same as the bodice, all the way across. This shirt is so proportional, I don't even know what to do with it. To wrap up, <laughs> to wrap up what is happening, I have to have a straight line, a straight seam from organza to Xavier fabric between bodice, sleeve, front and back, and I have to see if I can make the sleeve length the same length as the bodice length, not having enough fabric on the bodice, and wanting to be able to wear this to work. Here's the back piece. And while I am making a Xavier shirt, I do want to point out that I'm still watching women's college basketball, Iowa versus Ohio State, because I'm still an Ohio gal at, at heart. Caitlin Clark, you're amazing. You score a lot of points, but go OSU. Go Buckeyes. And I'm at the point where I need to decide if I'm going to attach the, if I'm gonna attach the organza to the Xavier piece for the front piece or do the dart first. Currently all signs are pointing to attach first before I do the dart. So that is what I shall do. Two 
sleeves, two back pieces, and one bodice that I'm gonna start putting the darts in. When I was younger, I was a major tomboy. And by major tomboy, I mean like, <laughs> I wore a tracksuit to Disney World uh, when we went, when I went as a kid. And also, I just always wore pants. Like, I just didn't really like wearing dresses. Actually, when I would get in trouble, sometimes my punishment would be wearing a dress to church. That's how much of a tomboy I was. I didn't even want to be in a dress. In fact, sometimes, sometimes when I would go out and I would be dressed in like sweatpants or just, I don't know, apparently not acceptable clothes, everyone would always be like, oh, did you just come from the gym? And I'm like, no, actually I didn't. This is just what I wear. Now mind you, this is before athleisure was a thing. <laughs> and uh, now I feel like it's acceptable to dress like that, whereas back in my day, people didn't really dress like that unless they were coming from the gym. I think why I was a tomboy was, I mean, I loved playing sports. I played volleyball and basketball almost year round. So I was just in those, like in sweatpants and like a t-shirt and hoodie, like year round. I mean, that's just what I wore. Right now I'm just stay stitching around the neck edges. So stay stitching helps prevent the neck from stretching too much because it tends to get stretched as we put things over our head. But anyway, I grew up in the 90s and things were just a little different than they are now. So I would just be playing sports and always in those tomboyish clothes. And I think it was really hard for me to like switch from like always being in tomboy clothes the majority of the time to dressing nice and pretty. It just like didn't happen. Also, I went to a Catholic school. I was either in like my sports clothes or I was in a uniform. Like there was no in between. When you're doing the neck, when you're stay stitching the neck, you're always like so towards the center. I don't know why. If someone in the audience knows why, please comment below. I actually don't know the answer. I did quickly get the back together, sewn together, and I have to say, I love how this just magically and perfectly lined up. That was not part of the plan, but I'm happy it happened. And then this is what I guess the top look like. looks like. There's no zipper. Um, I'm just gonna like, put in a little loop and a button and that is how this will close. As I got older, I did start to develop a little bit more of my style, like in high school when I didn't have to wear uniforms. I started wearing dresses a little bit more and started experimenting with what my style looked like, but it always still had that tomboy flair. Definitely wore cargo pants a lot in high school. <laughs> I did a whole video about that, you should watch it. Even through college, I felt like I dressed a lot like the tomboy, but really liked shopping at Ann Taylor. I just loved that sophistication, I guess, which maybe was so opposite of how I would dress as a tomboy. Shoulders are done. Okay, so right now I have a nice little bib, <laughs> um, but it's time to see if I actually measured correctly with all my pattern adjustments to see if the back is gonna match up with the front so I can sew the side seams together. And I'm not exactly hopeful. I'm not exactly hopeful, especially with the pattern adjustments that I had to make. Um, yeah, okay, this, this is not, well, it's not 
Yeah, it's definitely not matching up. <laughs> it's definitely not matching up. Usually when I match up my seams, start from the bottom and work your way up. Because I want that straight line across, the straight seam across, um, I'm matching from the top to the bottom and the back piece is a little longer than the front piece. And now I have to channel my inner team Tim Gunn and say, I gotta make it work. Make it work. See that little extra right there? Yeah. I'm just gonna trim it. And here we go. I'm just chopping off that bottom piece. <laughs> chop, chop, chop. Done. Nobody saw. Nobody. Who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna know. So I'm just gonna get this sewn together. I'm just getting the neck binding pinned on here, but all's to say, I think that's the reason that I was drawn so much to sewing. Wow, I really have to stretch this neck binding. It's kind of crazy, actually. All's to say that I think the reason that I was so drawn and started sewing and love it so much is that I get to make my own clothes. Like, like, I get to make my clothes what I want them to be. If I want them to be sophisticated, if I want them to be a little more sporty, I get to infuse my own that I can't always find, that I can't always find in a store. And I think that is one of the most satisfying pieces of making my own clothes, is really getting to, I guess, explore my own style and making my clothes fit me how I want them to fit me and how I want to look and all that and wow I don't can you see how much I'm having to like really <laughs> stretch this neck out to get this binding pinned on here also do you see how long I had to make the neck binding <laughs> like if you look at Zendaya's shirt she has like quite quite the neckline here so um hopefully I didn't make mine too big but I'm just gonna base this on to see how it looks. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I have it set to basting stitch, which is the longest width possible of a stitch, so that it'll be easy to take off, less stitches to take off if I want to redo it. Because I've made that mistake one too many times. <laughs> I am really, really having to pull this binding. Like, I don't know if you can see it. I'm literally just pulling it <laughs> to sew it together. We're basting, we're basting and pulling. Basting and pulling. sure it looks okay. Rather than backstitch, it's easier to take out the stitches of a tie than it is that of a backstitch. Um, <laughs> this is definitely not, not how I wanted this to look. I'm gonna have to assess. I'm gonna have to think about what my next move is. What is the move? <laughs> as far as I see it, I have a couple of options. I can use the normal pattern piece to make this shorter, like thinner, um, to what it, the, the pattern piece is supposed to be. Or, or I feel like I would have to experiment with the pattern piece neckline plus this neckline to not make it so fluffy up here. Yeah, we weren't going for a high collar. Um, so I guess how much of a risk taker do I think I really am? with what I already have here. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm cutting the neck binding in half. <laughs> and we'll see if that looks any better. Okay, I think cutting the neck binding in half was the best, the best idea. But now we're 
taking my time sewing the sleeve. Before I even try this on, I am actually going to crop it so that I can get a gauge of how much I need to crop the bodice. So I am just going to turn it inside out. Oh man. <laughs> how much do we need to crop? Sleeves attached and it's cropped. And oh my, is it cropped. But I almost think right here is the perfect length. I just can't raise my arms up <laughs> too high or you might see what you know, you're not supposed to see. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna keep everything the way it is. I'm gonna attach the other sleeve and then finish the bottom. I did have to try it on with the pants that I would be wearing with just to make sure everything looked okay. And I think it does. I think, I think we just have to finish it. To hem the shirt, I folded the fabric and then stitched close to the folded edge. And when I say close to the folded edge, I mean as close as possible to the folded edge. Then I trimmed almost as close to the folded edge as I could and then folded that back up. So I folded the raw edge shut and this is how it looks. I love this top, I love this top, I love this top. <laughs> I'll turn around so you can get the full view. I did have to bring it in a little bit on the sides, but um, yeah, I can't wait for March Madness and wear this top out. I think it looks so good. So how does it look compared to Zendaya's? 